So Bob, I want to ask, uh, what have we learned about the mechanism of action of eight, uh, SGL2 inhibitors that explains the cardiovascular effects of uh, agliflozin? It's a, it's a great question. I mean, to be honest, uh, I, I think the results were surprising, and I don't think many people expected there to be the dramatic effect that there was. And so really trying to figure out why that was is really a little bit of thinking backwards and trying to understand the way the drugs work and therefore what it could do. So what we do know about uh, SGLT2 inhibitors is they result in a little bit of diuresis and volume uh, contraction, and that certainly could be one of the, the factors, particularly in terms of CHF uh, uh, um, uh, incidents and hospitalizations for congestive heart failure, which they uh, saw a benefit for. Um, uh, there's also a small amount of weight loss, uh, which could also be a, a factor. There was a, a, a regression model that took the data uh, uh, from Empereg and tried to look at this. And uh, uh, again, to whatever degree you can believe that you can go back afterwards and, and do this kind of analysis. About half of the effects seem to be uh, the volume related. And they uncovered another strong correlation, which hard to know clinically this is uh, uh, makes sense, but it uh, is at least hypothesis generating. So there seem to be a correlation with uric acid levels, and whether that's an explanation or an epiphenomenon is difficult to know for sure. Uh, so I think we have some theories as to why this has been effective, but uh, you know, we're, uh, it was a surprising result, uh, mm -hmm. and so we're we're left to try to figure it out. So what do we need to go beyond those theories and, and try to you know sort of get that causal mechanism? Well, I think study designs, as, as Dr. Nzuki mentioned, that would tease that out. Uh, uh, so either you're comparing it to another drug or you're controlling things more effectively and now being able to look at uh, 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 contributions. And I guess the other big piece of all of this, uh, as I know we'll be talking about, is uh, class effect or not. And, and uh, if it is not a class effect, where you don't see the uh, uh, results uh, uh, corroborate, uh, does that tell you something then as a, as a hint into what the mechanism is? So the, there's another finding of the empagliflozin trial, Empareg, which is fascinating and may shed light on this, and this is the effect on renal disease. So uh, another very important publication um, looked at renal outcomes um, and it appears that these drugs are not just diuretics, but they act on um, uh, sodium excretion very proximally in the kidney in such a fashion as to, in a certain sense, um, work in a, in a lovely way with angiotensin-blocking agents. Um, so at the level of the macula densa, delivering more sodium to that part of the kidney seems to then potentiate the benefit of not having so much angiotensin action on board. Well, this fits very nicely into a lot of our um, clinical knowledge of what's good for heart failure and our theoretical ideas of what's good for the heart and what's good for the kidneys. So I think we really need mechanistic studies at this point to, to understand in retrospect what we found in this large clinical trial. It's, it's really exciting, not only from a cardiovascular standpoint, but also from a renal standpoint, which is you know, another scourge of diabetes, is, is uh, end-stage renal disease. And, and as uh, Dr. Bloomgarden pointed out, uh, there was um, uh, about a 40% reduction in the development of the composite renal outcome uh, in Empereg outcome, which was uh, the combination of a doubling of serum creatinine, persistent macroalbuminuria, the need for dialytic therapy or end-stage renal disease and renal death. Uh, and that was not driven solely by the macroalbuminuria, which some nephrologists feel is a softer endpoint than something quite hard like the need for dialysis mm -hmm. or doubling of serum uh, creatinine. So it's really uh, causing us to go back and trying to understand the physiology of the renal tubule. And as uh, Dr. Bloomgarden pointed out, uh, this may be a special, unique type of uh, diuretic class because of the proximal effect on sodium excretion and uh, you know, perhaps bathing the macula densa with sodium uh, can um, lead to an attenuation of the normal neurohumoral activation, uh, renin, uh, angiotensin, uh, antidiuretic hormone that could have counterproductive effects in uh, particularly patients with left ventricular dysfunction. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, we know that uh, uh, nephropathy is a, is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And so one could imagine a mechanism through which nephropathy is improved and therefore also uh, because of that, lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease.